are no table SQL statements. So this is very basic select statements uh, where the data is not being drawn from any table that already exists. We're just going to create the data in line and show how it uh, gets displayed. So the first thing is we're going to use Northwind. So I'll go ahead and use the Northwind Microsoft Reference Database. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is just run this select 54, execute that. And notice that what I get is a one row, one column table with uh, no column name. All right, the second one, hello. So this would be uh, text characters or uh, a character string we sometimes call. And uh, this is very similar. I get a one row, one column table. But in this case, I'm using character strings rather than a number. And uh, notice that the number shows is black and that the hello statement or hello string literal shows as red. Um, just to point out the difference in the data types, this looks a little bit different than the first one. Uh, I'm still showing a 54 in here. I'm going to go back and run the previous one. And um, notice they look the same, but they are very different. This is the number 54 that I could do some arithmetic on, add something to it, divide it by something. Um, whereas this is two characters, a 5 and a 4 next to each other. All right, so notice that previously we haven't had a column name, so I'm going to add here um, a renaming of the column. So when I say select 54 as, and then the name of the column is a number, and that's where that shows up. Uh, this is pretty important. Everything in SQL is by name. So if I want to reference or use that column in the future, I need to give it a name so that I can refer to it. Um, again, just in summary, uh, blue is for reserved words. Black is for numbers and names, names that I have created. And red is for string literals or character strings. All right, so let's see what else we can do. We can do a mathematical expression, 2 plus 2. And that's going to give me the result of 4. And again, I haven't put a name to this column. So I'll go ahead and do that in this next one. There we go. The number 4 is the column name. And here I'm going to do something a little bit you know, more uh, complex, some mathematical expression here. And um, notice that this is showing as a whole number. And I don't think it should be a whole number. But this kind of gets into the data types here. And I will uh, change this and show you something slightly different just to show the difference. So here we go. I'm putting a point zero on them so that the database will know that I intend for these to be floating point numbers, right, or numbers with decimals. So if I don't do that, it expects that all of these are integers, and so it does integer arithmetic. So 17 divided by 3 is, looks to me like maybe being uh, rounded down or truncated. So this result is a 5 times 2, and then here I'm getting the full uh, decimal points because I've indicated that these are uh, floating point numbers. All right, so next we're going to do a string expression. So here what I'm doing is taking the three characters BAR and concatenating them with NEY or kind of placing them back to back. So the result is Barney. Right. And you can do this um, you know, in a little bit more complex way. So here what I'm doing is taking three different character strings. And notice that this is a, it doesn't look like there's anything in there, but there is a space character in there. And that's why it shows up as Barney Space Rubble down below. 
All right, next uh, here is a function that uh, we're using. So uh, the square root function of SQL Server uh, takes the square root of a number. Um, functions in general will show up this magenta or pink color and they have a name and they use parentheses. So you pretty much always have to have some parentheses with a function. So here's a, a mathematical expression and the result is being renamed and that's the result. Now just to point out this is actually being executed on the database server, the remote server. So I'm sending this command but the mathematics and the computation is happening on the server not on my local machine. Alright so here are two columns for the table. So my select statement is taking the square root, it's also concatenating Barty and Rubble, it's generating two different columns, one called square root of 34 and the other a, a Flintstones character. And key to this is that comma right there. So we're showing the, uh, the select statement has a list of columns and the list has commas as separators. So here's three columns with commas at the end of the first two columns and there I get that. So notice also that that I formatted this pretty specifically but SQL doesn't uh, require you to format that specifically. So I could write it like that um, but just glancing at it it's a little hard to read it's a little hard to know how many columns I'm trying to get or to actually read the code, the SQL statement. So I could format it like this, uh, which is better, and now I, I kind of get the sense that there's three columns. Here um, it's better, it's making sure that I can see the three columns fairly distinctly, and uh, they all start aligned. But I also like to take the as statements and line them up and so I think that's the most readable of them and uh, it's very clear that there's three columns and I know exactly what the columns are and if I want to inspect the code or the expression for each column I can see it very clearly. So that's some no table SQL statements to get started with. Um, the next step would be to use the from statement to get data from a table.